Don't remember. Call Mr. Plow. That's my name. That name again is Mr. Plow. Hello everyone, it's Seth, probably better known as Afron Olive, and it's time for another edition of Budget Magic, and this week we are plowing Pioneer players, so let's talk about our Mr. Plow deck for Pioneer, jump into a Pioneer League and see it in action. Alright, so here is our Mr. Plow deck for Pioneer, and this deck, oh my god, it's so sweet. As you can see, 60 bucks of paper, 7 ticks on Magic Online. So another deck that is cheap enough that you can play for free with the free card rental program. So if you want to check it out on Magic Online, get into those card rental programs. You can do it without spending any money. So the idea of this deck is we're a mono white vehicle deck and build around our namesake Colossal Plow. In Colossal Plow, it's not the best card in our deck, although it is a good card in our deck, but it's kind of emblematic of what our deck's trying to do. Our deck is full of low cost, high power, but hard to crew vehicles, high crew cost vehicles, just like Colossal Plow. Colossal Plow, two mean 6-3 that makes mana gains life and it attacks, but it crews for six, so it's really, really tricky to turn on, but we have some shenanigans to make that happen. To back it up, we got a bunch of other vehicles. Maybe the best card in the deck, weirdly, is Consulant Dreadnought, just a one mana 7-11 vehicle that crews for six, and this card, it reminds me of Colossal Hammer. It gets these really fast explosive starts, but you gotta jump through some hoops to turn it on, and I hate to make this comparison, because you might remember when Colossal Hammer came out, we played it on Budget Magic pretty much right after the set release, and it was a really explosive fun budget deck and then a couple years later or a year later it suddenly developed into the best deck in modern i don't want to say it's going to happen again but i actually think it's possible that this deck once it's developed and tuned could actually end up being a real threat and pioneer similar to the colossal hammer deck because consulate dreadnought you play it on turn one you crew it on turn two it's a really fast clock three attacks and your opponent's dead we also have some removal vehicles surge hacker mech kind of absurd in our deck because we have so many vehicles it pretty much just snipes anything and leaves behind a big vehicle sky Sovereign, big flying threat, does some damage. So how do we turn on our vehicles? And since our crew costs are so high, we can't really rely on creatures very well. So we got a bunch of shenanigans, starting with Peace Walker Clauses, another vehicle whose main ability is just two mana, turn a vehicle into an artifact creature. So this turns on Colossal Blow, turns on Consulate Dreadnought. We also have Armed and Armored, a card I kind of forgot existed until Kamigawa's vehicles came out. This was like a theme booster card, I want to say, from Keldheim. So it is legal everywhere, but it wasn't in the main set it just turns all your vehicles into artifact creatures into lended turn for just two mana instant speed also equips up your doors but that doesn't really matter in our deck uh, so this is the way that we can like turn one console and red dot turn two colossal plow turn three arm and armor turn on everything smash it for 13 make mana play more stuff it's incredibly explosive we do have some creatures that can crew as well including giant ox uh babe just the best crewer in magic crews all of our vehicles as a two drop another way that we can be attacking with dreadnought on turn two hotshot mechanic toolcraft example are good aggro threats that also kind of crew up a little bit thanks to their mechanics. Otherwise, Ingenious Smith digs for a deck to find artifacts. Karn makes massive Karn structs because we have so many artifacts that are good for occurring vehicles. Card advantage against control. Mana base, Mech Hanger, another way to turn our vehicles into creatures. Dark Seal Citadel synergizes with Karn and Smith just to grow our stuff. Some planes to cast our spells in the sideboard. Daphne Silence, Damping Sphere for combo. Soul Guide Lantern for graveyard decks. Cathar Commando, really love this card in vehicle decks. Good crewer and good artifacts affecting and a reasonable body really underrated card and portable hole for removal and that is mr plow for pioneer that's our budget magic deck for this week so let's jump into a league and plow some pioneer players thanks for watching everyone i hope you enjoy the gameplay and i'll be back in a bit with a wrap up need some new kamigawa neon dynasty cards well you can get them from our amazing sponsor card kingdom by heading over to cardkingdom.com slash mtg goldfish and even get a free goldfish sticker just let them know you want one in your order notes and they'll hook you up Oh my god, my mic was muted. All right, budget magic time. We're playing Council of Dreadnought. We're plowing Pioneer players. <laughs> oh, we kept our opening hand, and this hand actually is really good looking. I mean, we get to go vehicle, vehicle, armed and armored to make a bunch of mana into Peace Walker Colossus. Uh, Council of Dreadnought's kind of absurd if you can turn it on. It's like a, I, I, it's like the Colossus Hammer of Vehicles is how I think of it. And maybe now with the new support that we've gotten from Gamagawa, it might be time to have a deck like this actually work. Opponent, oh boy, opponent. That is a good card, bad news for you though. Uh, we are going to arm and armor, turn on our vehicles, go to combat, smack you, make some mana with the plow, 
<laughs> and then it, uh, down to seven, Peace Walker Colossus. Off of our free mana, play a planes past the turn, and uh, your go, your go opponent. And what we are doing might be slightly less fair than what our opponent's doing, but we'll see. Maybe they got some artifact destruction. <laughs> <laughs> Woo, so good. All right, Iron Apprentice. Yes, grow the dork, sure. What's a follow up? Anger Bag Walker, certainly. And grow the dork. Opponent passes. Armed and armored. Go to combat. Do some attacking. Make some manas, gain some life. I assume our opponent's gonna have to do a, a smidge of chump blocking here, but we'll see. Chumps, blocks, double chumps and kills the plow. Gets a couple thopters, grows the elf, stays at seven. I wish we could play Sky Sovereign, but all right, we'll play the Peace Walker Colossus. Go, a better to depths. Well, we'll see. Can we close it out? I mean, we got off to a really good start. Can our opponent stabilize or will our piece? We could really use a land. A land to be able to activate two vehicles next turn would be pretty helpful. Or another armed and armor. That would also, we would accept. We would accept another armed and armor too. So land good. Yeah, we're one mana short from being able to sky sovereign off of our plow mana. All right, more hanger backs. Well, I mean, our opponent, our opponent can make a lot of chump blockers, which is annoying. Uh, Well, we will. Turn on the Dreadnought, I guess. This does force our opponent to chump. Yeah, oh, come on, manas. I mean, our opponent might stabilize here. The Hangerback Walkers are just making a lot of dorks. Ozolith, passing. Giant Ox isn't the worst. That is another way to turn on vehicles. So play the Ox. True. This means we get to turn on at least two vehicles next turn, which is good. I mean, we just basically gotta keep doing this until our opponent eventually dies about it. So it seems like our opponent's plan is going to be to make a big hanger back and then put the counters on things and make much thopters. I assume that that's where this is heading. Yeah, counters on the hanger back. About it passes. Well, there's the land. So we get to crew a vehicle and then Peace Walker Colossus a vehicle and then Peace Walker Colossus a vehicle. All right, we finally got to turn on all the dorks. Go attacking. So Bona can block with hanger back. Yeah, take it up, make a bunch of one ones, kill one of our dorks, drops to one. But our opponent has a lot of chump blockers and this Ozolith is letting our opponent just repeatedly, repeatedly make a big thing. So maybe our opponent ends up winning this in the long run, hardened scales, more counter shenanigans and gets the Luris opponent. All the counters on the Thopter. I wish we had a way to kill that. That would make our life so much better. Opponent, wow, gonna go attacking. Okay, so opponent's going aggro now. Play the land, Sky Sovereign. Kill a Thopter. Crew the Dreadnought. How does our opponent even cast a Luris? Go attacking. Opponent's gonna block. Are we gonna get our opponent to one and not be able to close out this game? Is that where this is headed? About it. Sun Petal Grove. All right, so working towards the Lurus. I mean, we can turn on all three vehicles, but they still have this like Ozilus Thopter without us being able to kill it is really obnoxious. You know, we oh, we need, hmm, Search Hacker Mech doesn't quite do it. We don't have quite enough vehicles. Wow, that's annoying. I feel like this would have beat most decks, but our opponent has been able to make a lot of Thopters with their with their setup here. Enough Thopters to, to maybe stabilize plays a smith i mean they happen to draw double oh triple hanger back yeah that's incredibly unfortunate okay so i think we're dead now that our opponent hit triple hanger back yeah we can't we can't get through opponent just made wow all right all right, all right. Dark Steel Citadel, sure. Well, good news is we have a lot of sideboard cards for this matchup. Bad news is we got off to a really good start and our opponent just had kind of exactly the right cards to stabilize, which is really, really brutal. Uh, so we get some portable holes. We get the Cathars Commandos. Yeah, I feel like, I feel like we win that a pretty big percentage of the time, but. Yeah, I think we might actually go down some of the random dorks. Like, I feel like hotshot mechanics and tool crafts are just going to get blocked, so they're not going to be very effective attackers. So I guess we're all in on the vehicle plan. Oh, my goodness. Huh. Unfortunate that our opponent drew three hanger back walkers. All right, well, we'll keep. Here comes the dreadnought. We don't have any removal again this hand, which is still a little bit of a bummer. 
now that we have six removal spells. We'll see. So we have turn one, Dreadnought, turn two, attack you. See if our opponent can have the, the triple hanger bag draw again to stay alive. Opponent, mulliganing to find hanger backs. I think without hanger back, I don't know. I mean, I guess our opponent could also brought in removal, but without being able to make like a million chump blockers with hanger back, I feel like our opponent's odds of winning are really, really slim. Opponent, plays a tap land. Well, okay, opponent, uh, we'll take seven here. Dreadnought off the ox and smack ya. Down to 13. Well, we're off to the good start again. Can we actually kill our opponent this time? Opponent has a portable hole to stay alive for a second. Uh, we draw planes, well, play the smith. Whiff, unfortunately, play the land. Maybe we should have just attacked with the Dreadnought. For some reason, I was thinking our opponent would clearly, would clearly uh, hit the Dreadnought, but apparently not, opponent. It's a automaton. Yeah, we did miss an attack that we could have gotten, but we will play another giant ox. Yeah, I just, yeah, that, that's my fault. I just assumed they were going to hit the dreadnought. Well, go attacking about it. Down to four and tab land. Needs more removal to have any hope. Okay, another smith. So I guess the smith potentially lets our opponent chump block. Oh, well, that's not bad. Surge hacker mech. Kill a smith, grow a smith, crew the dork, and this is how it's supposed to go. Hitcha! All right, I don't think our opponent's gonna be able to stabilize this time. They're gonna need something very impressive. Although, last time we got our opponent to one and they stabilized, so I guess we'll see. Opponent, one again. Can we actually win this time? Hits an untap land, which probably what our opponent needed. We have a lot of threats though this time, and this one has menace. What do you say about it? Did we get there? <laughs> <laughs> Did we plow ya? Actually, there was no plow this game. Did we dreadnought ya? Hardened scales and stone coil serpent. I mean, I think this still works though, right? Cause we get to one, two, three, four, Karn. Make a Karn struct, grow the smith, and then we can crew the dreadnought, and then we can crew the mech. And you swing with everything. Oh, there we go. There we go. Jank about, jank about. Well, I mean, that's the kind of fast starts the deck can get off to you. Uh, I don't think we change anything. I think we run it back. I mean, the deck is, oh, it's just so, so funny. It's so funny, but I think it's actually like kind of good and free on Moto. So another one of those, those, I just love Pioneer right now. Pioneer is in just like such a sweet place as far as, as far as how many different things you can do in the format and have them be at least like reasonably successful and mostly do them without spending any money on Magic online, which is kind of insane. So you know what? I think we actually keep this. So we're not very good at turning on our vehicles yet, but I do like Portable Hole Cathar Commando. Those are two of our best cards. Well, there's Armed and Armored. All right. Um, well, let's play Dreadnought. Go. Opponent gets to keep their Llanowar for now. About it. Plays a dork. Well, we will play a Plains. Yeah, I think we just pass. We can flash in the commando. Stone coil serpent. I almost wonder if it's just worth blocking this. It probably is. Let's commando. Kill the dork, because that's going to get really big. Untap. Play the planes. Peace walker, colossus, go. So next turn we can mech something, and then we can try to turn on all of our vehicles, hopefully. All right, big hanger back. Well, we got the answer for that. Opponent hits us. So play the planes, play portable hole. Get rid of the hanger back walker. Console of Dreadnought, hit you for seven. Pass the turn. We're close. We actually have 13 points of damage. I don't think we can get in an attack with all of it because everybody has blockers, but like this deck just pours on so much damage. <laughs> Like it's kind of, kind of, it really does kind of remind me of Hammer Time in a really weird roundabout vehicle-y way, but it kind of reminds me of Hammer Time. And we still have one removal spell left over, which is decent. And if our opponent portable holes, the portable hole doesn't really do anything. It's one of the nice things about hitting a hanger bag. It just doesn't do much. Oh, I got another one. Oh, Stone Coil. Sure, that's fine. That's fine. Passes. Well, I think we, oh, how do we want to do this? Oh, I really want to attack. But if we attack, we can't really do anything else, which is just so awkward. Yeah, let's just Surge Hacker Mac. Kill the bigger stone coil. Play the land pass the turn. And now we're hopefully set up for a big turn next turn. Opponent, Hardened Scales, sure. Passes. 
arm and armored. Here comes the dorks. What answers do you have about it? Attack with everything. Pona needs some removal. I mean, if our opponent doesn't have removal, it would just, uh, I think dead. I think we just got him <laughs> with the dreadnoughts. <laughs> I hope this deck works. <laughs> it's just so sweet. It's so sweet. Blocks, blocks. I mean, if they don't have removal, what do they, what do they do? All right, Dramoka's Command. Okay, so that lets him kill the Peace Walker Colossus. So basically our opponent's hoping we don't have a way to turn on our vehicles, which is a realistic plan. Although we know we have a armed and armor. Wow, oh, we just win, I think. Do you have a dork? No. All right, well, we're just going for, we're going for lethal. Uh, well, we will armed and armored. Attack you with the Dreadnoughts and hammer time. <laughs> all right, all right, all right. <laughs> Not bad for the consulate dreadnought. Oh, this deck's so sweet. Well, <laughs> sweet, sweet. Mm, let's keep doing that. Budget magic time. We are plowing in. Oh my God, I think we got to keep this. I mean, how do you pass up double double plow giant ox consulate dreadnought? Obviously, we do need to hit a land and we are in the play. Plus, I mean, we do have a we do have a rule that we stick to here on, well, on the YouTube channel in general, which is one land, one keep. <laughs> And this hand is actually like absurd if we draw just one more land. Like so, so incredibly good about it. Spire Bluff, Canal. There's our land right on time. Well, in that case, I think we play Giant Ox and hit you for seven. All right, the race is on opponent. I guess they can have a bounce spell. Dreadnought to the face. Ugh, this person's really gonna get Gonna get plowed in a minute. Double, double plowed. Opponent down to 13. I mean, so opponent is already on a three turn clock. Ops. Good card. I don't know if it's as impressive as attacking for uh, seven on turn two, but I mean, opt, yeah. Helps you find what you need to the bottom. Apparently not what our opponent needed to, uh, to avoid the plowing. <laughs> Plays a land and lightning axe discards a phoenix. And Flame Blessed, all right, so opponent discards their hand. Well, we'll play Colossal Plow and pass the turn. Seven and six, I'm not, not that good at math, but I think that adds up to 13. So if we resolve this arm and armor, opponent, oh boy. All right, so I think our opponent should be dead here. I think they should be dead. <laughs> Maybe this deck just busted. Maybe we broke it on a budget, vote it, pathway. And plays it, sure. I mean, I guess they could have like a spell pierce or something would be annoying. I mean, I think we just go for it. The problem is if they have a counter, we do get a little wrecked. But if they don't, we win. Armed and armored. Do you have a spell pierce? No. Well, we will attack you for 13 points of damage. Make a little mana and uh, <laughs> the, math, the math checks out. <laughs> That's a, that's a turn four kill. Uh, all right, Deafening Silence Portable Holes seem uh, reasonable against what our opponent's doing. Actually, not Portable Holes. Deafening Silence Soul Guide Lanterns. The question is, what do we cut? We can probably go down the Sky Sovereign. Is that too much hate? Are we taking too much away from our primary game plan if we bring in all eight guards? Maybe we go like one Karn, one Deafening Silence, one Soul Guide Lantern. Cut some of the one drops? The one drops, our opponent's deck has a ton of removal. So we gotta assume they're gonna be able to kill our one drops. Let's try it like that. Let's go six hate cards, do a bit of trimming. And I mean, really like, hopefully we can just do what we did there again. Ooh, all right. Well, I mean, we're keeping this. We don't have the dreadnought, but we can plow with the ox. And we do have a hate card, which is nice. Should slow our opponent down a bit at least. Opponent, Spire Bluff Canal on land and deafening silence, go. So with the deafening silence, our opponent can't get back arc lights, basically. They can still very slowly like flip thing in the ice or whatever, still play the control game, but thing in the ice. You know, land and let's get down the plow. If our opponent taps out, we would love to get it in a plow hit. If our opponent leaves up mana, the one downside of Colossal Plow is it does only have three toughness. Uh, so it is killable. Expressive iteration. Oh, we might, oh, we'll see. We'll see what color of mana our opponent has. We might be trying to get in a plow hit. Also nice that our vehicles don't actually get bounced by thing in the ice if it flips. I mean, hopefully we just get to this surge hacker mech. Opponent, steam vents, untapped. So representing the removal, we'll play the land, play Smith. We're just gonna wait a turn, go digging, get the land, dreadnought, grow the Smith and pass the turn. All right, so search hacker mech is nice. Opponent, 
so they did have a removal spell, although it technically couldn't have killed, technically could not have killed the, the Colossal Plow. Not enough spells. The opponent plays a land, as is. Apply Dark Seal Citadel, Surge Hacker Mac. Please resolve. Snipe the thing in the ice. That's big. That's real big. All right, thing in the ice down. Deafening silence doing a bit of work. And now we are to the crewing vehicles stage of the game, I think. Opponent, more things in the ice. Uh-huh. Oh, Mech Hanger's not the worst. So we get to play, let's see. Play Mech Hanger. Hot shot mechanic. Crew the Mech. Giant Ox. Crew, oh, we would like to plow, but I feel like plow's likely to die. So let's go for the for the damage plan. Crew the Dreadnought, go to combat, attack you. Well, let's see if they got some artifact removal. Opponent only gets one spell either way. Oh, here it comes. Lightning Axe, okay, so they managed to, they managed to kill the mech. Discards the arc light, takes seven. Well, that's fine. We played around the, the plow removal, or removal on the plow. Pieces of the puzzle, counter off thing in the ice. So opponents only got one mana, flame blessed bolt and stern dismissal. So opponent found an answer sort of, and this thing in the ice is gonna flip at some point. Opponent passing. Crew the dreadnought. Crew the plow. Go to combat. So I assume our opponent's gonna bounce something. Okay, gonna bounce the plow, get a counter off the thing in the ice. This does work for our opponent because it means we can't replay it this turn, which is a bummer. But we do get to attack our opponent for seven, so I'm not even sure they can attack with the thing in the ice. Go attacking. Opponent blocks, goes to four. Well, we will soul guide lantern. Snipe in arc light, just in case they find a way to get rid of the deafening silence. All right, so opponent can flip the thing in the ice. Can they attack with the thing in the ice? All right, treasure cruise, draws some cards, flips the thing in the ice. Remember, opponent still only gets one spell each turn. So draws three. That was our opponent's one spell. I assume they just have to pass? Plays a tap land. Passes. We draw a dark steel citadel, so we will play Colossal Plow. Play the land. Play Giant Ox. Play Hotshot Mechanic. Pass the turd, see if we can close out this game. Oh, we're so close. Opponent kills the hotshot mechanic, uh-huh. Untaps. I mean, our opponent's still in a pretty fragile spot because any one attack is lethal. Wow, all right, hard cast the arc light, sure. Steam vets tapped and attacking. Yeah, let's draw a card. Another mech hagger and a dreadnought. How can we close out this game? So I assume our opponent must have removal to kill the plow. Now play the dreadnought. Play the mech hanger past the turn. We're so close. So, so close. Opponent adapts. Land. Three cards in hand. And passes. Okay. Oh, uh, we draw another land. One, two, three, tap, one, two, three. I mean, we can just crew everything and attack. As Awoken Horror is annoying. I think what we do is we play Karn. See if this gets our opponent to play their one spell. New, all right. In that case, we take down Karn, make a very big construct, play Darksteel Citadel. Oh, do we go for it or do we just pass? So this can block, this can block, this can block, or opponent removes this. All right, I think we wait one more turn. We need to force our bone to do something, basically. We need to force our bone to do something, and then we can close out this game. We're so close. Next turn, we also get the, the construct, theoretically, as an attacker. Opponent untaps. We're really, 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 really close. Opponent plays a land. Passes. All right, what do we draw? Oh, that is a good one. Oh my goodness, that is exactly what we wanted. Uh, okay, one, two, three, four. Actually, let's play this. Let's play this safely. We're gonna take down Karn, make another huge construct. We are going to play Surge Hacker Mech to kill. I really want this to die. All right, hit the Woken Horror. This is the turn where it's happening. 
Oh, bonus comes in up. All right, all right, all right, all right. Our plow deck came through. We had to play it slow and careful, but we got there in the end. Eventually, we just stack up the biggest, jankiest board ever, and, and it works. It works. <laughs> plowed him. We plowed him. Actually, we didn't even, our opponent uh, didn't want to be plowed in, uh, and conceded to avoid the plowing, but still, we would have plowed him if they hadn't uh, hand conceded. They should have named this something else. Anyway, <laughs> on to the next one. <laughs> sweet, sweet, sweet. More Pioneer plowing, more uh, more Mr. Plow for Budget Magic in Pioneer. And, oh, if only we had white mana. Well, we can cast this, which can crew this, which can, uh, you know what, we're gonna keep this. Mech Hanger is a interesting card. I think it's super necessary to this deck, but it does occasionally kind of screw you over. Planes, maybe? So we can still cast, okay, there's a the planes. All right, so now life is much, much better. So we get to play with planes, play Hotshot Mechanic. All right, now we're good. Now we get the best of both worlds. We get our vehicles and we get to cast our spells. This is probably auras. Ay, this might be bad, bad news. Uh-huh, we can't kill that, so I guess we, I guess we just uh, play a plow. Yeah, this might be tough without having uh, interaction at the moment. Well, boom. Take some opponent pathway. Sentinel's eyes, finds. Yeah, if there's one thing I know about Aura's decks, it's that if you can't kill the, oh God. Well, it's game. Well, that's gonna be a quick one. <laughs> Well, at least we're seeing the power of a of a new card. Yeah, okay. I mean, we can chump attack into this 12-11. Well, we got some removal in the sideboard. <laughs> Ponent's deck. Wow, I thought our deck was unfair. Ponent's deck, way more unfair than ours. Uh, portable hole in. So the way that you play against an Aura's deck like this, there is exactly one thing that matters, only one. And that one thing is keeping the SROM or the Light Paws off the battlefield. If you do that, you win. If you do not do that, you lose. Uh, so we got the portable holes, which help, although it's still not a ton. Uh, so we'll see, definitely a little bit, a little bit scared of this matchup because uh, if you don't have a lot of interaction, it's just real, 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 real tough. And as you saw there, like our vehicles are big. The biggest advantage of this deck in most matchups is our vehicles are just big enough that we can attack through anything. Not true of a of a, a turn three, 12, 11, flying first strike, vigilant light pause uh, at all. So we really, 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 really want to see a portable hole in our opening hand if we're gonna have any shot here. I mean, we got the portable hole. Unfortunately, all of our vehicles are pretty expensive, but we'll see. Opponents also black white, so they could have thought seized to take the portable hole and then do their thing. Planes for our opponents. Lands or cheap vehicles, please. Okay, well, I mean, I guess that's a thing we can cast, so that's something. Schwamp, light pause. Well, hopefully that's their only one. Run out the Cathar Commando. Land, please. All right, we draw the land. I'll go to combat, attack ya and portable hole. Get rid of the light pause for now, pass the turn. Well, now we're one lane away from Surge Hacker Mac. Oh my God, they got another one. Okay, and there's the Sentinel's eyes. Oh geez, that's real, real bad. Oh, but it passes. And now they have protection too. And it's a three, three. All right, well, we untap, play the plow and die, I think. Pass the turn. Yeah, I mean, I think we're just, we're probably just dead. Unfortunate, oh. <laughs> all right, so our opponent just had, oh, yeah. I mean, I think this deck's gonna be super legit in Pioneer. The problem with Pioneer before is you only had one payoff. Now it has, now it has, like, look at this. Like, we even had the removal spell. Yeah, this matchup seems incredibly bad for us. So even if we kill it, it comes back. There's no, wow. Yeah, that's, that's ins oh, absurd. All right, Amona Bazes. Search at your mech. Well, if you're gonna die, die quick. I think that's a, a good rule to live by. I guess your free plow deck can't win them all, and this deck seems absolutely brutal. This could be another another budget deck possibility. Although, like I said, it's like 
It's super, super swingy. Really powerful. But if you play against a deck that, uh, like the, uh, the Parkelion deck that we played for Much of Brew a little while ago, I think that that deck just probably spanks this deck um, because you just got a bunch of removal. And if you have a bunch of removal, you just kill this, kill this. And then your opponent's left playing a bunch of cards that are really, really bad, unless they have one of the payoffs on the battlefield. Uh, unfortunately for us, our opponent had a really good hand. They had a hand that had multiple, uh, three payoffs in their opening hand, and we just don't have the removal. Surge Hedger Mac really good in a lot of matchups, a little slow against something like this. So, well, all right, next. Budget magic time. We are plowing in Pioneer, playing some uh, mono white colossal plow vehicle action. Oh, Oath of Nizza, interesting. Mono green devotion. Well, I don't know how this goes. Good news is we got vehicles and we got armed in armor. Bad news is we're on the draw and our vehicles are two and three mana, so we might not be doing anything. Oh boy, burning tree. Well, <sighs> giant ox does go well with the plow. Hmm. Well, let's see, can Babe save us Lair of the Hydra? How many burning trees do they have? Burning tree number one. Oh, if there's one thing we learned from Historic, it's that sometimes your opponent draws all the burning trees and uh, and they accidentally win. Well, play Colossal Blau Go. Uh, if they also have Nykthos here, that's so incredibly bad. I mean, it's but this is bad either way, but if they have Nykthos, it's like deadly bad. That's the... The Mono Green Dream. Opponent, Vivian. Counters on the dorks. Goose attacking. Well, we get to try to do things. So we get to play the planes, play the giant ox, plow the Vivian, make a bit of mana, gain a bit of life. But our opponent's still in kind of absurd shape here. All right, make three mana, play the smith. Hopefully hit another cheap vehicle. Well, take Sky Sovereign and pass. All right, opponent, adapting with still a ton of mana, thanks to these burning trees. Castle Ganger, but even more mana. Elvish Mystic. Well, do they have another payoff? That's a real question. That's free, thanks to Nick Foes. Busterino, Werewolf Pack Leader. All right, all right, all right. Well, we're in this. We're in this because because of Plow. Like being able to plow the Vivian was huge. And now we're in this game because we get to curb the plow. Curb the plow. This is gonna make enough mana that we can cast the Sky Sovereign. Go attacking. Make some mana. There's hope. We'll see what our opponent's last card is. Make some mana. Opponent's going to block. Sure. Sky Sovereign. Shoot down a burning tree. Grow the Smith. Okay, getting some mana off the battlefield. Play the land, and we could even do a sneaky Sky Sovereign animation if we want to. Wow, are we gonna overcome a double burning tree draw? What's our opponent have? Six mana, all right, something big. Seven mana, eight mana. Genesis Hydra. Okay. Well, this is our opponent's last card. So our opponent is officially out of action. Uh, I don't know what they take. Either Nissa or Pack Leader, I guess. All right, gonna take the pack leader to try to draw cards. About it. Goose to combat. Well, armed and armored. Turn on Sky Sovereign. Eat your burning tree. Okay. Oh my goodness, we got a shot. We got a shot. About it, Bazes. Actually, play the plow. Grow the smith. Crew. This does not have reach, right? Okay, shoot down the pack leader. Headshot. And now we can we can use the plow on defense. Wow. Pony had double burning tree into Nykthos on the play, and I think we're gonna win. Plowing that Vivian was huge, 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 huge. Oh no, do they just top deck something else huge? I mean, if our opponent just keeps top decking huge things, then that's brutal. Oh, voracious Hydra. Okay. Going to fight the ox. Well, we will crew the plow. We lose the ox, which is a bummer. He goes attacking. Well, we will kill that. We have ways to turn on our vehicle still. All right, Mech Hanger, Peace Walker, Colossus, Grow the Smith, Turn on Sky Sovereign, Hedgea. Someday our opponent will probably just draw land. Down to eight. Oh, we got a shot. We got a shot about it. Adapts. Come on, no whammies for once. No. This is something else huge. I'm going to be so. Okay, great hench. That's a problem for the future, but will there be a future or will our opponent be dead? They might just be dead. Well, if our opponent's attacking, then they're definitely dead, right? Because we just turn on both vehicles and smack them. Uh, okay, so, um, 
Hotshot Mechanic, Crew, Peace Walker Colossus, and then Crew, Sky Sovereign. Go to combat. So our opponent can chump block with the lair of the Hydra, but I think they're still dead. All right, Hotshot Mechanic, the plow comes through. I cannot believe we beat that start. I cannot believe we beat that start. Opponent had uh, the Nykthos dream, and it wasn't It wasn't enough, it wasn't enough. Okay, so, opponent, Mono Green Devotion. I think we want Portable Holes. Portable Holes in, go down, probably Tool Crafts. Maybe Cathar Commando. Damping Spear does stop Nykthos. I mean, I guess there's an argument for it just, just because of that. Is that enough? Like, Cathar Commando kills Great Henge, which seems important. Plus, it's, like, not the worst block. I really like Cathar Commando. Like, 3-1 Flash for two that also has upside is, is just, like, a reasonable, a reasonable card. Maybe we go down, like, one armed and armored. Bad news is our opponent probably has a bunch of artifact destruction, I would assume. Hotshot Mechanic, and that plow really came through last game. All right, one more Hotshot Mechanic. We're not going to bring in Damping Sphere. Run it like that. I mean, our opponent had, I think, kind of their, like, ideal start. Like, that was on the play, double Burning Tree, turn three Vivian of a Nykthos. And it wasn't, a, it wasn't enough. It wasn't enough to beat our janky vehicles. <laughs> plow OP. All right, all right, all right. We'll keep this. Opponent. Land of Elves. Uh, well, planes and console dreadnought go. The only bad news is all of our crew costs are super high at the moment. Opponent. So next turn we can play plow. There's a nick those. Next turn we can plow, and then we can crew something. Outland liberator. It's not bad. Can kill a kill a vehicle. Oh, but I was just gonna blow it up right now. Sure. Well, play a planes. Play the plow. How quickly our opponent snapped that off does scare me. That makes me think they have another artifact destruction spell in hand. So there's not really any reason to do it before we crew pack leader. Well, mech hanger, play hotshot mechanic, play Cathar commando, crew the plow, go attacking. Are we blocking? They probably need this for mana purposes. No, opponent's gonna block. All right, sure. So I block the plow, we'll play a peace walker. Past the turn. Well, we would like another vehicle. Another big vehicle would be nice. Removal would still be fine. Like, if we get rid of this Lanawar, our opponent not, might not be able to cast anything. Ooh, another Lanawar. About it, passing. Wow, attacking. Okay, sure. Well, I mean, crew. Go attacking. About it. Do they block? I mean, with double piece walker next turn, we can use them to crew each other. Wow, opponent is going to block. All right, opponent blocks. Goes to 14. Well, planes, Peace Walker. Well, go, go, Peace Walkers. Pass the turn. That's what we got. Can they close out the game? Opponent adapts. Draws a Castle Garen Brig and casts a mini Voracious Hydra. Sure. I mean, that is more mana symbols for our opponent, which is relevant. Wow. Okay. Portable Hole. Get rid of the Hydra. Mac Hanger. Colossus, turn on Colossus. Colossus, turn on Colossus, hits you to two. Wow, can we close it out? Can we close it out? About it. Takes their beats down to two. Untaps. What do they find? Come on, Peace Walkers. Come on. Come on. Come on. We've been able to keep the Nykthos in check just by making our, our opponents blocked with everything. So opponent has to block all of our vehicles for the rest of the game, essentially. Tapping. Legend ruling. Okay. It's to six mana. Genesis Hydra, so I'm gonna make some chump blockers. Hits a, well, Old Girl Throw is actually kind of a great hit for our opponent. That's a that's a blocker, chump blocker that does something. So our opponent does have to double chump block. Portable Hole wins us a game. I mean, I think they have to take Old Girl Throw. I don't think there's even any option. Wait, don't you die if you do this? Okay. Well, I think our opponent chose death. I'm not sure what I'm missing, but. Okay, you're not sure. I mean, we have two six sixes though. How does this? Yeah, oh, it's opponent is giving up. All right. Oh, good enough. Good enough. Good enough. Wow. Oh, we're gonna draw Surge Hacker Mech too. Okay, that's yeah, that's also good. Oh, maybe this deck's legit. Maybe it's legit. Wow. Plowed him. Sweet, sweet. Budget magic time. More pioneer plowing and yeah, all right. We got the little artifact one drop start. That's fine. Our vehicles are a bit slow, but they are removally, which is good. And we're on the draw. Hopefully we draw another vehicle. 
And we'll see what our opponent's up to. Forest and All right, Mono Green Devotion by the looks. Mono Green Devotion, take two. Well, last time we beat him. About it. Oh, Surak. Yeah, I guess that's part of Mono Green Devotion. I'll we'll play the land, play Toolcraft Exemplar. Go. Opponent, Forest. Land, where else? Hmm. Two armed and armored in a row is not the best with this hand. Well, Toolcraft hit ya. Come on, cheaper vehicle, please. Found it, that is have a dude. I mean, I think we either want a cheaper vehicle or I guess at this point drawing lands is maybe not the absolute worst because uh, eventually these search hacker max will be good. Land. Old Groove Troll. Up and it passes. Well, we draw land. So we're doing nothing again this turn, which is kind of a bummer. Yeah, this draw's been awkward. Well, pass the turn. Up and it adapts. Oh, so Sir Jack Max only killing an Elvish missed it. Oh, <laughs> Okay, Bonus got the Nick those. All right, so Bonus got all the manas. Ah, we might be in trouble now. We might be in trouble, Cavalier of Thorns. Gonna do more ramping. Passes. Well, there's our cheaper vehicle. A little late to the party. Well, one, two, three, four, search hacker mech. Kill the, kill the mystic, I guess. Not exciting, but that's what we gotta do. We know the Surak is coming, which means a lot of damage is potentially coming. I'll pass the turn about it. Untaps with infinite mana. Nick those for seven. <laughs> oh, jeez. Um. <laughs> All right, well. <laughs> Not sure there's enough plowing in the world to get out of this. About it. Another Cavalier of Thorns, another Oof of Nizza. Gets another Old Growth Troll. And another Nykthos in Legend Rules. And Nykthos for Infinite. Old Growth Troll, Surak. Yeah, that's a, that's a tough one. Ponent's, I mean, Ponent's just, Ponent's going off. Ponent is literally going off at the moment. Yeah, Karn and Kiora. Oh, and it's a, oh geez, and it's a Karn deck. Yeah, we're super <laughs> untapped the Nick though. Sure, well, that was a good, a good turn. Karn is a concern. That's a, that's a pretty big concern. Pretty, pretty big concern because we don't actually have a clean way of dealing with it. I mean, we can still turn on our vehicles with armed and armored, but this is, I'm very scared. Very, very scared. Uh, well, we're gonna go down to a Glaft Exemplar. I don't think the aggro plan is actually that realistic and uh, maybe against control. Like if you're into blue white control, maybe like tool craft attacking is a, is a thing that matters, but definitely need to keep all the armed and armored. Karn is a thing we can do if we get locked. Yeah, I guess a hot shot mechanic or like that. Well, we're on the play, which is good. And if we get off to a fast start, we can just hopefully kill our opponent before they do what they did there. I mean, we've seen that we can beat the, oh no. Oh no, our plowing, oh no. Oh, our luck has officially run out. <laughs> oh jeez. All right, well, brutality. Not good, five cards. We gotta plow though. Who knows, maybe we draw an ox and we just plow them. It could happen, planes. I mean, we just double one lander right down the curve. Pony also did some mulliganing, but this is kind of like Tron where they're mulliganing for a nut draw and we're mulliganing out of out of uh, desperation of needing to hit land. So I think that mulliganing favors our opponent because they're just trying to mulligan for Nick those. Mono green is sort of a, a London mulligan rule deck in the sense that you really lean heavily on the mana, uh, on the mulligan rule to try to hit your your important card. Every deck is treasure hunt to some extent, never zombie hunt. <laughs> in the world of London mulligans, everything's a zombie hunt. I'm on it. Kiora, untap salvage mystic. Uh, mech hanger. Hmm. So I guess in that case, we have to just play Smith and we get a portable hole and we'll play the planes and we'll get rid of the Elvish Mystic. And we'll see what happens. Next turn, we can turn on the plow. We're gonna need some more action though. Like just plow attacks is not that exciting. Ponet taps and untaps as an old growth troll and gets to draw a card. That's a good, uh, a good plow blocker. Hot shot mechanic. Like, I don't even know if we attack with this. Like, this is this is bad in so many ways. Yeah, Mold of Fives are tough. Um, well, we will play. Yeah, I don't think we attack. I don't think it's worth it. Hotshot Mechanic, play the Mech Hanger, pass the turn. Like, we'd just be sacrificing our plow for giving our opponent a ton of extra mana with this Kiora untapping for it. Nick those. <laughs> oh! Well, sure. 
So opponent, back to having infinite mana, Lanowar, Lanowar, gets some at the Nykthos, then taps the Nykthos, and Storms of Festival. Well, we definitely did not run super well this game, that's for sure. Molda fives on the play are tough. So one thing about this deck is it definitely wants to get in the early. All right, there's a million drop, draws a card. Yeah, I mean, I think this one's just over and a half. Opponent doesn't bother attacking. Giant Ox. Oh, you would have been good earlier when the plow was on. Well, you know what? We're gonna just go out plowing. We're gonna we're gonna die the way we lived. Let's uh let's see if we can plow Kiora, and then once our opponent inevitably blocks, we will uh we will concede. We just we don't have the pieces to get back into it from this point. Boom! Combat. I mean, we're out of cards. Plow Kiora. Gain three. I mean, our opponent just blocks, and then they have even more mana. Yeah. All right. Fair enough. Well, lesson there is don't draw all one landers, I guess. I mean, so we finish with a with a three and two, which I mean, again, we know we can meet Mono Green because we just beat him the round before. Again, like if you're trying to free to play Magic online, that's all you want. Like a three to two, uh, a three and two record earns you money, and if you can keep going three and two, eventually you're gonna have every card on Magic Online. You're gonna have every top tier legacy deck and vintage deck. Uh, so that's all really, when it comes to free on Magic Online decks, that's the goal. And that if you can do that consistently, you're gonna win. And every once in a while, I don't know, maybe you don't mold a five and you get a four and one, or maybe you don't mold a five and you get a five oh, and then you're even happier. But we got one treasure chest with, a, with some plow action. So what do we get? Oh, rub it in, why don't you? Oh my God, come on, come on, Magic Gods. It's gotta be the extended art of the festival, the card that just beat us, that's unfortunate. <laughs> Ironic, I guess. Oh, River Kelpie. Someday, River Kelpie, someday there will be a deck for you. All right, well, I mean, the deck's sweet, and it's funny, and it's good enough to win a lot of games. It reminds me of, it really does remind me of Hammer Time back in the early days. A, a budget deck that gets these really fast wins. Everyone's gonna think it's a meme, and the next thing you know, it's probably gonna be like a top tier deck or whatever. I, I think there's a possibility that Mono White Vehicles, Mr. Plow, whatever, might do the same thing in Pioneer, but anyway, we'll talk about that in the wrap up. So what do we learn this week about Mr. Plow and Pioneer? And we ended up going through three and two in our league, uh, ended up three and one going into our last match and then just got absolutely spanked by Mono Green Devotion. Although we beat Mono Green Devotion earlier, so I don't think it's that bad of a matchup. The one matchup that did feel bad, oh my goodness, the Auras deck. We might have to play Light Paws Auras because that deck looked ridiculously frightening. Uh, we do crazy things and we saw our deck do just absurd things with our vehicles, just run away with games. And our opponent in that match had like a, I don't even know, 13 power flying Vigilant Light Paws attacking us on turn three. It was really ridiculous. So white black aura is looking really scary thanks to light pause. But as far as our deck, the deck looks like a meme. It looks like an against the odds deck. One of my opponents asked if it was an against the odds deck, but it's really not. I think this deck is actually like semi-legitimate. So it is really high risk, high reward. It gets off to insanely fast starts. It does really explosive things, but it is a little removal light. And we saw in like the Auras game, if our opponent can make a really huge creature, it does kind of neutralize our vehicles, but the power level is surprisingly high. Considering they're playing giant oxes in all the other like really giant vehicles, Colossal Dreadnought, but I think this deck is really powerful, and when it comes to free decks on Magic Online, if you can go three and two consistently, that's all you want. That's enough to earn money every league you play, and you're gonna slowly build your collection. So if you can get free decks that consistently go three and two, you're going to eventually build a huge Magic Online collection. So it's actually a really sweet result. As far as the rest of the deck, I like the vehicle package. Armed and Armor was great, Karn was great. The part that I'm most skeptical of, honestly, is like, Toolcraft Exemplar and Hotshot Mechanic, those cards aren't that great at crewing in our deck. They can give us a nice little like aggro start where we play these like one drops and try to attack, but that plan didn't seem very legitimate for actually killing our opponents. So I'm almost wondering if we'd be better without them and just relying almost solely on Giant Ox and our like Peace Walker Colossuses and Mech Hangers for turning in our vehicles, our armed and armors. Like maybe we don't need those one drops because he felt really just kind of clunky and I really want 
some removal in the main deck. So that's a change I think I'd look into, maybe dropping at least some of the one drops, like getting rid of the toolcraft exemplars and moving some removal to the main deck to slow our opponent down a little bit more outside of our search hacker mech, which is good removal. It's just a little bit slow removal. So I think this deck has a ton of potential. It's really sweet in budget form, surprisingly competitive in budget form. And I think it's got some upgrade potential as well. Definitely could use some tuning and brewing. And like I mentioned before, it really reminds me of the hammer time deck uh, in a really weird way, but it has the same explosive starts where you have these games where you're like, eh, console dreadnought, crew it, kill you in a couple of attacks. Very similar to play a random dork, put a hammer on it, kill you in a couple of attacks. So it has the same kind of play pattern as hammer time. And it's really below the radar. It's playing all these janky cards that people, if you look at it first, you'll kind of scoff at it. And we all know how that one turned out. So I actually think that with some more tuning and brewing, this could end up being a really legitimate deck in Pioneer. So that's Mr. Plow. That's our budget magic for this week. Thanks for watching, everyone. I hope y'all enjoyed it. And I will talk to you soon.